Hello, guys, and welcome back to the podcast. This is Paint the Town Dead, and I am one half of your host, Caitlin. And I'm Andrew, and I just want a uh, big shout out yes. to People's Sexiest Man Alive, Paul Rudd. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because he's, he's a beautiful man. Just because, you know, it's so funny. This feels like a win for me as well because uh people say we're twins. Is that so? They say we're basically doppelgangers. I thought that was you and uh Family Guy, dude. You well, said that, I think. And what, you're very wrong. What's his name? Seth MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane. You guys could literally be twins. I've never had anybody actually in real life be like, "You look like this famous person" and then have it be anywhere close to true. <laughs> It's I, never been true. Yes. Uh, who else? Who else have people said you look like? I don't remember. They probably mostly just uh, like. Who do you think you look uh, like? You've, uh, you've compared yourself to somebody before. I don't think I have. That's impossible. I I wouldn't. That, do that. is your twin. That is your. It really twin. isn't. There's a. She's showing a picture of Seth MacFarlane, and most of you probably don't even know what I look like, so it's fine. <laughs> Google him, and then and that's what you look and like. And then imagine Except him he has with more hair. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine him, but with the. Balding and with a beard, and yeah. it'll look nothing like me, really. Hundred percent like you, literally, literally twins. Somebody told me I look like a soccer player once. I can't remember who it was now, but oh well. Can't help you there. You know I'm fresh out of soccer player ideas. Yeah, well, that's your fault, isn't it? I mean, y'all could literally be twins. Really not though, like not even close. It's you're, it's madness. I'm looking at all these this. pictures. You look identical. Really don't. Um, how have you been for the past two weeks? Uh, mostly fine, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, because... I don't know what you want from me. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's life. It keeps happening every day. Yeah. What do you, what do you want? I don't know. Yeah, what do you want from me? I don't know. Stop demanding so many things. I, I, I can only handle so much. I was trying to make Andrew's day better, um, before we started this podcast, and I was like, would you like some hot apple cider? And he was like, yeah, sure, why not? And I was like, okay. Uh, I think I made a mistake because I heated up. I, I guess the mug I heated it up in is not microwavable, but it does not say that Discovery Park of America. And I heated it up for two minutes and I grabbed the handle and I burnt the crap out of my finger on the handle, on the handle. Yeah, that's surprising. So you just assume something's microwavable unless otherwise stated? Because I would think yeah. the opposite. Because I have like a lot of mugs and stuff and it's like, yeah, unless they it's look, like dishwasher and microwavable, it's fine. Unless Go for they it. look fancy, like I have a couple that I've gotten from like uh, like Broadway shows that have toured, and they look fancy, like they have a special coating on it. And I'm like, that's probably not microwavable or dishwasher safe. I look at the bottom; it's not microwavable or dishwasher safe. Okay, see, I would, I don't know, I just would not make the assumption. Look at that; it just looks like a mug. There's nothing fancy. I don't know what to tell you. Look, that look that is a microwavable mug. But they lied because my finger they says never, otherwise. It doesn't even say that it's microwavable or dishwasher safe. I think I got it on my pinky too. Oh my gosh, I did. I just touched it. I'm gonna have a bl- I'm gonna have blisters on my fingers. Well, at least I don't have to type for this podcast. That's right. Um, but my my cider, it was good though, wasn't it, Andrew? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. I liked it. Uh, let's let's talk about. Uh, wow, don't do that. Why would you do that? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Sorry, that was my cider. <coughs> Gosh. And then I choked because I was laughing. Can't believe you. <coughs> Go ahead. Um, we're going to talk about people who have real problems and aren't... Uh, oh, we're going to talk about you? Complaining. No. Oh. We're not going to talk about me. Okay. My problems are psychological, not um, actual problems. Oh, okay. Well... Well, I don't, I don't mean that. Uh, I don't mean like, uh, it's not a, mit- what, what am I even saying? What are you trying to say? My problems are my own fault, Okay, I guess. Okay. Self-inflicted. There Maybe that's go. what I'm looking okay, for. Okay, perfect. It's not like, uh, you know, I'm not going to be out there going like. I tried uh, my best. <laughs> it's not like uh, that scene in Jojo Rabbit when she's like, yeah, the Jew put a curse on my uncle and he became an alcoholic, a gambling addict and an yeah. adulterer. Nope. It's not that. It's not the immigrants or whatever. It's it's me. I did it. You did it. Um, But we're going to talk about something that happened in a place called Conway, Arkansas, <gasps> which is home to... Um, That's a place. Arkansas's uh, second most famous college, uh, Central Baptist College. <laughs> sure. Sure it is. Yeah. That is a tiny college. Yeah, I think they're getting their asses kicked by ASU tonight in basketball. Mm. So that's fun. Yep. Um, at least I've heard of them. Unlike, uh, there's some college they play called like Champion Christian which Never is apparently in Hot Springs, 
Like, I never even, I passed by it for I, real. I think it might be fairly young in the grand scheme of colleges in the world. But mm. yeah, I was like, I've never heard of this place. Never heard of it. Um, so yeah, we're in Conway. Cool. Back in 2002. Okay. May of 2002. And. I know what story you're going to cover. Do you though? Yes. Is it because you looked at the thing? Nope. Um, well, I feel like you don't know. Okay, go ahead. Because it wasn't on the list. I know. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. We'll, we'll see if I'm right. Go ahead. Fair enough. Okay. So we're going to the home of Carter Elliott. Uh, yep. Okay. <laughs> because I recently saw a news article. Okay. But go ahead. I don't, I don't know anything about it. That's fine. I don't care if you do or not. I'm not doing another episode. I'm not, I'd have to write a different thing. A I'm not doing one. it. A third one. <laughs> yeah. I started doing another one. I'll talk about it afterwards. Okay. A little bit. Okay. We'll touch on it. Um, he is 48 years old, a prominent businessman of Conway. Mm-hmm. And, uh, What's he which do? is kind of business, uh, a thing called Detco Industries. It's like a chemical products company of some sort. Mm-hmm. I think it says like chemical wholesaler. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's one of those places that's like does business with other businesses. So mm-hmm. usually you don't hear about mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. Um, he is said to be pretty loose with his money. He liked to spend it because he's a rich man. He's nice. like, check this out. He also was a gambler. Nice. Um, supposedly was not a problem. Mm-hmm. This is mm-hmm. what they say. Mm-hmm. Um, Carter's girlfriend, Brandy Watkins, and her friend, Emily Canada, went over to his house after they had been uh, spending a weekend in Memphis. At Tunica? Um, that's where you gamble. Tunica and Memphis are different places. Well, not far. <laughs> well, if you're going to gamble and you're from Memphis, wouldn't you just go over to uh, Southland? Ooh, no. It has a big old casino and stuff. No. No. And it's this giant no. facility. No. I think you would just do that. No. Uh, yeah, why wouldn't you? Because it's scary there. At the at the racetrack? Yeah. At, the at racetrack Chaplin. is like the one part that's nice in West Memphis. If you say so. I mean, you look at it and it's just giant, beautiful facility surrounded by garbage because it's, <laughs> it's West Memphis. Because it's West Memphis. No offense, but also, sorry. Yeah. Um, get it together, West Memphis. I don't want to tell you. Yeah, don't yep. be mad at me. Yep, I'm not the one who made your town that way. It's just it's it is what it is. That's other people's fault. Yeah. Uh, so she had spoken to Carter uh, the day before mm-hmm. on a Saturday, but could not reach him the day after on Sunday, which is when they were coming back from Memphis. Mm-hmm. They lived together. I'm not sure if they did. I mean, they're going back to his house. Maybe they did. Okay. Uh, There was another, there was a guy who lived there with him, though, who was like described as like uh, Carter's, Carter was like his mentor or whatever, basically. Okay. Um, So uh, his name was Timmy Robertson. Uh Uh-huh. So the women, they they go into uh, the home and when they get in there, they find two dead men. Two? Oh, his... is Carter Elliott and Timmy Robertson. Wow. Both of them face down on the floor. Um, so... Well, that's not a good sign for them. No, that they, they're very much... Uh, they've been murdered. Um, so Brandy and Emily, they run to a neighbor's house for help. Police come in. Check out, th- check out the scene. See what's going down. So, uh, at the scene, they basically find Carter's body... Uh, He's got like white towels on the back of his head, and like a silencer maybe. I guess so because because he he had been shot through the towels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Seems like maybe. Yes, de- almost certainly, especially because uh, later we will know that like nobody heard anything. No. Nope, yeah. In the neighborhood, so there I get. You go. I mean, I don't know how. I know silencers in movies where it's like the like that is nonsense. Oh, okay. Like, it doesn't actually do it like that. Oh, okay. I don't know how how much you can actually do anything to it, but, you know. Anyway. As somebody who is not a gun expert. We're or not ballistic experts or... An expert of anything. Experts of anything. So, he's been shot with a 9 millimeter gun through the back of his head. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing for Timmy Robertson. Towels and everything? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Police find an unused condom on the floor near his, near uh, Carter's hand. Weird. Don't know why. Weird. Or do I? I don't. In the future, I'm not going to know why. Oh, okay. 
It's just a weird thing. Okay. Um, and the back pockets of his pants had been cut away. I'm sorry, what? The back pockets of his pants had been cut off. What? Just the pockets? Just the pockets. Okay. Um, Robertson had also been killed basically the same way, mm-hmm. both execution style mm. on the ground through the back of the head mm. with a nine millimeter gun. And they find in a, uh, a baseball cap that had a, an unused 45 caliber round inside of it. Whose baseball cap was it? I'm not sure. Probably one of theirs. Okay. Because, um, they don't find any like DNA or fingerprints of anybody. And so it's probably if he had been wearing a hat, if the killer had been wearing a hat, right. hair would be there and yeah, stuff. So yeah. I assume it must be one of their hats rather than the killer. Um, when they, they, they search the house and do all this, they turn the house over to the Elliott family and they find a nine miller nine millimeter gun in the house. What? Um, which apparently I guess belonged to Carter Elliott. Oh. Uh, they they look it over, it is it is not the murder weapon. Okay. And good, good eyes, fam. Yeah, good eyes, cops. Like, yeah, I don't know what happened there. Sometimes they miss stuff. Yeah, it's fine. They're the kidding. Red Hall thing, they they missed the gun the first time they searched his room. So, you know, they went back a second time and they're, they're like, ah, there we go. They are human and to err is to be human. Which is why we just need to replace them with robots. Okay. We'll all be replaced by robots eventually. Don't worry about it. That's fine. Um, yeah, it'll be just like. Uh, the world of Judge Dredd, which is definitely a very happy world. Sounds it like isn't. it. <laughs> it's very bad. It's a bad time. I think the crux of that is like nobody has jobs anymore because the robots. And so they're just like, well, you're all poor now. Sorry. Suck it. And we're in charge. And also there was like a nuclear war. But anyway. We, you know. <laughs> so Elliot and Robertson, they, uh, they didn't have like known enemies. And, you know. Carter Elliott's like a rich guy, well known around town, but nobody's like, we should kill him or whatever, as far as we know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one person they look at is his ex wife, whose name is Lark. Pretty. Is that how you would describe it? I wouldn't have described it as pretty. Awkward, weird, I don't know. I don't like it. The name Lark? Lark. I like that name. Lark. You're don't awkward care for it, and weird. Which is how I would know. It takes <laughs> one to know one and all that. The only lark I know is quite pretty. Well, I'm sorry that they have a bad name. Sorry you have a bad name. <laughs> Maybe they should change their name. Mm-hmm. They'd be way better off. To Andrew? No, don't change it to that. There's too many of those. Truth. So Lark and uh, Carter, they were together for 18 years, but they had, uh, they had divorced uh, 10 years earlier than this crime, so back in 1992. Um... Apparently, like, the divorce was pretty pretty nasty. Uh, but they find that Lark had moved away from Conway to a place called Salt Lake City, which you, is very far talk? away. Yes. Boy, that was a long way. So, she moved there. And they're like, well, let's just check and make sure. And it's like, yep, she was definitely in Utah at the time that these two definitely? men would have been murdered. Pretty definitely. Uh, okay, okay. In the meantime... Uh, Lark, you know, uh, she's, she's a person and, and, uh, you know, she's going to date around at some point. Uh, she gets married to a man named Richard Conti and he was a doctor. Nice last name. Conti. I assume that's how you pronounce it. Could be Conte. I don't know. C-O-N-T-E. So do with that what you will. Cont. I'm going with Conti. (laughs) Uh, so they they met through Lark's brother-in-law, who went to medical school with Conti. Oh, he's like a doctor, doctor. Yeah, what did you think he was a chiropractic doctor? <laughs> They're not real doctors. Yeah. Well, what do you mean, doctor, doctor? You know what I mean. I think doctors of medicine started using that name because they wanted to be more associated with like other doctors, like doctor oh. of whatever. Oh. Because they wanted to seem legit. Oh. Yeah, I think that's right. Who's to say? He's a physician. Yes, he worked in the ER Ooh. in Carson City, Nevada. Boy, we, we're just going all over the place here. That's right. Uh, this Richard Conti guy, though, real weirdo. Oh, tell me. Um, tell me more. Oops, sorry. Yeah, 
uh, because he's a doctor and rich, people would call him eccentric. That's which a word. Is, That's a word that rich and weird people get called. Exactly. But you have to be rich and weird. Yeah. Or something. Or yeah. famous and rich, weird. Rich. Rich. Keyword. Rich. Exactly. It's like a weird, nice, nice way to say you're, you're bananas. You're, you're a bit odd. Yes. Um, for instance, oh he claimed that uh, out of high school, he was recruited by the government Shut and up. trained to be an assassin. Ooh, where are you now? And he said his code name was Paladin. Paladin? Paladin. Okay. And Boy, these are delusions he, of grandeur. He would use the alias Richard Boone. Now, you don't know this, and I didn't know this, because um, we're too young to have known this. Mm-hmm. We were millennials. Yes. Um, there was a Western show called Have Gun, Will Travel. I've heard of it, never seen it. Mm-hmm. And there was a character on it named Paladin, and it was played by an actor named Richard Boone. Ooh. So what a nerd. He really liked that show, like, huh? uh, uh, Yeah, it seems like a weird, insecure nerd, but he's also a doctor. Like, Well, there's lots of those. <laughs> yeah it's like you have to be a certain level of smart to be a doctor and you can also be very eccentric with that oh, i thought you meant like there's lots of doctors as in it's not a big deal being a doctor who are you there's millions of you you're oh, not important there are a lot of doctors <laughs> it's like uh yeah in community somebody's like if doctors are so smart then why are there millions of them is there millions i don't know probably around the world let's say oh well, there okay. would have to be yeah. Um, yeah. So it's like you're you're an ER doctor. Like that will impress people right there. Are you trying to suck up to your cousin? No, I'm just saying. Like in general, if if you're like out there dating, for instance, I don't think you have to do much but be like, "Yeah, I'm a doctor. What's I'm a, up? I'm a physician." You don't have to be like, "I'm a trained assassin with the military." My name is Paladin. I'm Paladin. I I call my house the Paladin Arms. That's a thing he does. That's really weird. It is. It's like um, another community these are, reference. These are what we call red flags. Indeed. Um, they did not stay married very long. Like <laughs> months. Uh, and she was like, I need to get out of here. Yes, this guy's a madman. But like, um, there's a bit in community where uh, basically Jeff thinks this guy is trying to impress people by pretending to be a beginner at pottery, but he's actually an expert come into a beginner class and just being really good is he and um yes but he doesn't know that oh okay and the guy is also a doctor and so he's like explaining this whole thing to abed and abed's like why wouldn't he just impress people by saying he's a doctor then <laughs> yeah. like, obviously yeah but you know because he, he's a crazy person I hope. yeah so he actually had two homes. He had a oh. yeah. He had like a cabin in Utah. I knew it. I knew it had to be a weird cabin isolated somewhere. And then he had another house that's in Nevada, somewhere like near Carson City. It seems like. Mm-hmm. Um, but he would like um, he would do a schedule where he'd work for two weeks and then two weeks off. Mm-hmm. Basically, like commute to Carson City, Nevada, and then go back to do whatever for two weeks. Um. One one thing he did that was real weird, he called uh, Kevin Clark, who was uh, Lark's brother-in-law, the one who set them up, mm-hmm. called him. He said he had been shot multiple times while on a mission in Afghanistan. What? And then he showed up to Clark's house a few hours later wearing like camo and a bulletproof vest. And he had wounds of some sort on him like actual wounds but they weren't bullet wounds at least not real ones Mm -hmm. he cut himself open and put bullets into his body i'm sorry i'm sorry what yes now hear me out that's the biggest red flag of all (laughs) it's just wild like cuckoo bananas stuff i i don't i don't know that that you need to be. You are unstable. Somebody needs to put you in a, a facility somewhere where you cannot be a danger to yourself and others. Hopefully, wow, and get some medication. I don't know, but that's that's, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah, and also like, also you, why? <laughs> why didn't? Yeah, why didn't you get? Why didn't you get medical treatment in Afghanistan where you were getting shot? Like, what did you do? Like, hop on a plane just to go to your? Just it's so o- weird. Toot over to your friend's house and get help. Very strange. Also, where they spent. Casey, were they like spent shell or just like I, 
Here's a bullet that hasn't been shot out of a gun. I'm just gonna stick it in. in Surely my they were they had been shot out of a gun already, and he just gathered them up. You would think so. I mean, if he's trying to fake it, he would know that much, I guess. But I mean, the guy, like Clark, here is a doctor, and he's like, "You obviously did the thing where you put them in yourself." That's very weird. Oh, that's so weird. Um, also, hopefully, hopefully, uh, this dude did not know how crazy Conti was when he's setting up his sister-in-law. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. that'd be, I'd be like so mad. Just like, hey, why don't I set you up with this person who is a madman? Yeah, sounds great. An absolute lunatic. It's no different than any anybody else I've dated. Sure. If you anyway. say so. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, um, they get divorced, as I said. Yeah. And Conti was not happy about that. Well, what did he expect? Come on, be reasonable. <laughs> he, you seem like a reasonable man. He be seems reasonable. very reasonable, yes. <laughs> just just sit him down, have a talk. It'll, It'll work out fun. fine. It'll be fine. Just explain it very slowly. Yep. Um, <laughs> very. <laughs> Or explained it as like, no, we we have to separate the because government the government wants us so. to. Yeah, wink. Exactly. Um, so he would he would call Lark all the time, begging her to take him back. Um, he would also leave items in her apartment in Salt Lake City, which apparently he had access to. Hopefully, she changed her locks after this, but he left flowers and jewelry and love notes mm. again in her apartment. Hey, also, red flag. Yeah, but they're divorced, so I mean... Oh, okay, cool. She, she's tried. She's tried now. It's not like she's going like, I'm going to stick I'm gonna stick with this. We're going we're gonna to power through these, these issues in our relationship. That's so weird. Uh, one time he called her, and she said she could hear gunfire in the background, which is probably like fabricated. Who knows? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, specifically the gunfire. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if he was like shooting. Anyway says that he's in a gunfight in Afghanistan mm-hmm. and he's worried that he might die so that's he called her to let her know how much he loved her shut up so that's why he's doing it cuz he's yes desperate he's deranged and weird um then lark goes missing <gasps> what she didn't show up to work and so police go to her home and she's not there um her daughter calls Conti and is like, have you seen my mother? And basically she figures out that he took her. He had drugged her and like handcuffed her and took her off to his home in Nevada. This is a man who will kill people and not think twice about it. I've seen the shows. I know how this escalates. Yeah, we, we've seen statistics. I know things. <laughs> Very few things, but I know things. I know enough. That's right. Um, Police go to his house and they are able to get him to stand down and let her go. Um, oh, obviously, she's still alive. Yes, he lets her go. He's going to be arrested. Obviously, they search through his cabin. Uh, they find oh boy. <laughs> they find guns, just lots and lots and lots of guns. That's about right. It's America. It's fine. There's no rule against having guns. There's something very normal about that for sure. Especially if you're like a guy who has a cabin somewhere it'd be weird if you didn't have guns yeah. also there's lots of bullets which you need to make guns work right it's just like having batteries for your remote control car or whatever that's what i hear you got to have all that um including nine millimeter rounds which i think are pr- fairly common but i don't know um but what's weirder is he had maps of conway and faulkner county oh and he had written down Carter Elliott's address. Well, okay, the doy. And they found the names of other men that Lark had dated in the past. Oh, so Lark had... Oh, I see. So, for the kidnapping, he pleads guilty, mm-hmm. and he is sentenced to 15 years in prison in Nevada. Okay. Um, as part of the plea agreement, he had to give up all of his guns, including also and also knives and stuff. And he also had a grenade and a grenade launcher somehow. I, I, it's safe to say that he would need to give that up. Yeah, they're like, you, you know, bud, you can't, you can't have anymore. That. Um, so there's all this craziness with with the guns and the maps, and so it's like suddenly you're like, maybe he was involved in the murder. Maybe we have we have something going on here. Uh, and the idea is that it's some sort of like 
deranged jealousy thing because he's wanting to get Lark back. Right. And so he's like, okay, Here's I, gotta, I gotta get rid of these exes in case they come back or something. Oh my gosh. At least that's the theory. Um, but there's really not like a ton of evidence beyond the maps and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like there's no, there's no fingerprints. There's no DNA found. Mm-hmm. Um, none of his guns match the gun that shot Carter Elliott and Timmy Robertson. Surprises me. I mean, if he did it, he probably got rid of it and was like, I have all these other guns. I don't it's, need this gun anymore. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And his landlord claimed that Conti had been home the weekend of the murders. So it's like, not a Only lot here. Time. And it's like the investigation kind of stalls a bit. Uh, people are obviously like, why aren't you charging this guy who probably did it? Mm-hmm. And the prosecuting attorney is like, because we have virtually no evidence. We have not enough to do anything with. Um, eventually, we get a prosecutor named Cody Highland who um, actually made solving this crime part of his campaign to get elected as the prosecuting attorney. Wait, are we back in Arkansas? Yes. Okay. Yes, this is back in Conway. And uh, so he wins that election. And in August of 2011, so it's been a, been a few years, been nine years, uh, Conti is two days away from being released on parole in Nevada. And Arkansas says, we're going to charge you with two counts of capital felony murder. And so he is extradited to Arkansas to stand trial, which begins in January of 2013. And at this point, he is, uh, Conti is in his 60s. He has multiple sclerosis. So he's confined to a wheelchair, looks like a sad old man. And I think it's like a legit thing. It's not like Harvey Weinstein where he's like got a walker and then you see him yeah. away from the trial just being a normal person. It's like, except, yeah. you know, being a rapist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and not a normal person. Hopefully. Maybe everybody else is out there it's raping true. and I'm just the only one you, not. You're right. Hopefully you are right. <laughs> that would be a bummer. Um, but again, there's like, there's kind of not a lot of evidence, you know. Nothing's directly linking Conti to the murders. The best evidence they get is from two inmates in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. They were with uh, Conti in the medical wing of the prison. And while they're there, one of them asks him if he killed Carter Elliott to meet Robertson. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hell yeah, I did. And they got nothing on me. And undercover cops. No, there's, they were inmates. Mm, Okay. But it's two of them, so they can corroborate it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, And the jury deliberates for about an hour. Mm -hmm. They come back, and this kind of surprises me. Uh, They said guilty, despite, like, there not being that much evidence, it feels like. Mm -hmm. But they they say he's guilty. He's sentenced to life in prison. Mm -hmm. And he did that. He's dead. He died in prison in 2018. That's it. And that's the whole story. He never had his case reinvestigated, like... No. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, there's not much evidence. We're not going to retry this? I mean, he if he appealed, I didn't see much information on that at all. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Wow. That was, a, that was very circumstantial. Yeah, like, I don't know if I would have... Like, I would... If I were on the jury, I would think, like... I need a little more. I would need more... Yeah. I mean, I mean, the map thing is, and having the guy's address is very suspicious. It is. And I mean, it sounds like it was probably the right person, but maybe it was. I don't know. It's definitely like pretty dodgy on. So he never got to anybody else on that list. Just, just. I guess not. So Robertson was just a, by, just a bystander. Robertson, it, uh, assuming this all holds true, mm-hmm. he was just unlucky. Just, he was wrong place, wrong time. Gotcha. And also Carter Elliott was just unlucky. Cause like, how could he know? What his ex? Yeah, from, they divorced ten years before. Yeah, and she lived in Utah. What's he? What's he care? What she's up to? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I would just eat. I mean, two thousand two. So Facebook's not even a thing either. So was, he couldn't go Facebook stalking his ex and be like, "Oh, she's getting married." Like he wouldn't. He probably wouldn't know what she was even doing. Yeah, she probably got married to that dude, and he didn't even know. Hmm, that's really sad. I, I feel is. so bad for her because she's so alive and kicking, or was. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know ago. her status. I mean, these these are fairly old people, I guess. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Carter was forty eight. 
that was 20 years ago. So she was probably of a similar age. So mm-hmm. she, I mean, she'd be probably in her 60s. That's not that old. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's kind of really hard for her, you know, going, going forth and because it was her ex, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's not her, it's not her, her fault by any means, but I bet she took a lot of that guilt and blame for no reason at all, you know. But how could you not? Oh, that's really sad. Well, that's what we do here. Yeah, uh, we we bring no happiness, none. <laughs> and we never pretended we would. <laughs> uh, that's why we named our thing so depressing. That's right. Uh, most of the information I got was from a three part series by mm-hmm. Janie Jones. <gasps> I and, love her. And Ay Mag. But she w- listen, guys. Big news, our girl gave us a shout out on Twitter and started following us. We started following her. Man, she's great. She she if she's kinda like the Arkansas crime queen, I feel like. Yeah, pretty much, I yeah, guess. She writes a lot of good stuff and she writes really well. And she wrote that book that we used for the Red Hall episodes. Yes, yes, she sure did. And the episode both those episodes would not have happened otherwise. Because she, I mean she literally compiled all that information. Yeah, she did all the hard work. We good, just, she what is it? A good uh, journal journalistic effort. Yes. Yes. There, there's thought, a. Thought you're trying word. to remember what the word journalism uh, was. Ju- ju- journalism. So that's the uh, that's the story. Pretty brisk one, especially compared to the last time I did a story. Well, you had to make up for it. Yeah, that's right. That was such a. Ooh, that was a doozy. That was a. A sweeping epic. That was. Do yes. you have anything uh, depressing to talk about? depressing so we can knock because i'm just scared that you're gonna try and talk about the holocaust again <laughs> when this is like the part of the show where we talk about just whatever uh what if i what if i what if i do what if i want to talk about the holocaust i would like you to knock it out now okay. <laughs> instead of later well sometimes thoughts just come to me it just happens but that's the because i mean I, whichever episode it was, I specifically said, this is the part where we talk about happier stuff. And then you ended it with the Holocaust. You know, I had to talk. I had, it was a part of what was happening in my life. Not the Holocaust, just a story about it or involving it, sort of. Anyway. Uh, do you, so do you have a holocaust thing? No. Or no? Okay, I good. Don't. I'm going to say a thing, first of all. Is it depressing? AEW Full Gear was this weekend. Uh, and... The hangman, Adam Page, is the world champion, and we're all so happy for him. Caitlin, this is the culmination of a two-plus-year build to him winning the championship. It's great. Um, so, yeah. Well, I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Do the you the rem- anxious millennial cowboy. Do you Have you seen Bob's Burgers? Yeah, I love Bob's Burgers. You know, when Tina gets nervous, she's like, uh, uh, Yeah. She gets uncomfortable or doesn't like something. That's me. I just wish Caitlin weren't so rude. You know, that's how I live my life. Arkansas State won football this weekend. Yay. Which is pretty exciting. We're alumni, sort of, I guess. Kind of. It's uh, very funny that they won because they beat ULM, who are usually not very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arkansas State's having basically their worst year in, a, in about 20 years. And we still beat them. And we've now beaten them 12 years in a row. <laughs> Wow, yeah. that's a lot. Feels good. Suck it. <laughs> Feels good. Suck it, Monroe. Okay. Um, I don't know. You go for a second. I don't... Um, you don't have anything? Actually, I do want to talk about something. Okay. There's a new series coming to Netflix. It's called The Harder They Fall. Have you seen commercials for it? Nope. It is about uh, black heroes of the West. And guess who's featured in it? Uh, Bass Reeves. Bass Did Reeves. We, we talked about I'll it. I say, is this the one we were talking about yes. that they were doing? Yes, it's coming or has come to Netflix. It's coming very soon or it's already come to Netflix. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's finally here. It's coming. So that'll be a, a really cool watch. Yeah, we, sh- we should watch that. It has Zazzy Beats in it. Yes, it sure does. It sure does. I can't remember the fella who's playing uh, the character of Bass Reeves, but I do remember his face. Like, I don't remember his name. I remember his face trying to find because see if it's come out yet delroy lindo mm. would have never remembered that one no probably not um yeah that sounds exciting yeah so i saw that i was like we have to talk about that yeah we should um what else you got um i don't know okay um i watched dune and i thought it was pretty good 
Yes, let's talk about Dune. Dune, uh, first of all, gorgeous film. So beautiful. I, I love I love the look of it. You know what else was gorgeous? Um, Blade Runner 2049, which I also watched. I'm not talking about in Dune. You know what else was gorgeous in Dune? I, I mean, I know what you're going to say, but I'm trying to think of something funny. No, um, say it. Zendaya. Well, yeah, for all the two minutes she was in there. The Sandworms. <laughs> You know it. The 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 little ships they flew around in that looked like dragonflies. I did love those a lot. The guy who rolled his head eyes in the back of his head and said a bunch of numbers or whatever because he used the spice and he's a mintat or whatever they're called. Don't remember that one. It, it happens like towards the beginning when they go to the Atreides planet. <gasps> I knew ah ah I, th- I knew I knew I knew that. I knew that the, I was thinking about covering the story. Andrew, a book was just written by Ashley Elliott, daughter of Carter Elliott, called uh, Speaking about of... About this? Yes. Oh, God. Called Speaking of we'll the Devil. We'll have to come back to it then. Called Speaking of the Devil. I remember writing it. That's I wrote it down. That's my that's my <laughs> thing. I wrote it down. So so we'll have to look into that, read it and, and, and whatnot. But I knew, I knew it was found. I was like, I literally wrote this down somewhere. So um, it's called... The demon in disguise or speaking of the devil? Mm. Oh, speaking of the devil. Stand by. I'm going to tell you. I think our girl Janie Jones probably wrote this um, article called speaking of the devil. Just stop. We're going to have to pause for a second. Well, then um, I'll just say while we're doing this that I've played through metroid dread a few more times yeah that game's pretty good still uh i played it on hard mode which was fairly easy actually oh cool it was not much different hard mode is almost the same the demon in disguise a painfully real true crime tale hmm. yeah oh Dwayne hebda who i've actually spoken with before you probably just remember it but i've had an interview with him before but Dwayne hebda wrote an article called speaking of the devil about Carter Elliott and Timmy Robertson's murders. And uh, Ashley Elliott wrote a book called The Demon in Disguise. It was released in September. Well, all right then. There you go. I found it. Might have to look into that. Oh, that's so sad. This was a really traumatic event for her, it says. Oh, I, I mean, how could it not be? Yeah, it seems like it would It would be weird if it wasn't, yeah. actually. So sad. And that just kind of helps us. We're, we're going to go a little darker here. Kind of helps remind us, you know, the, the stories we do tell, they're, they're real people. This stuff actually happened. And it happened, there were ripple effects. There were shock waves of it. It wasn't just the actual victims of the murders and the crimes. They had family too that, that suffered as well. So, and years down the road, 20 years down the road, still dealing with the after effects and the consequences of that, um, which is, I think hard to deal with but she it said in the article something about therapy and i think therapy is really important especially for traumatic things like that and we all interpret trauma differently uh something that might not seem traumatic to you can be traumatic to me so um don't let anybody tell you that your trauma is not relevant and talk about it all right then and there's my soapbox yeah um get vaccinated so yes please (laughs) anyway i got my booster that's cool. John got his booster. I haven't done that. I don't know if I'm. I don't um, know if you, I don't think yeah. you're quite eligible yet. That's fine. I'll just keep staying away from people. I prefer it that way anyway. Sounds good. I finally have a real excuse to do it. It's been yeah, great. It's so, been great. Yep. So Dune, uh, obviously Oscar Isaac, what she's talking about? <sighs> oh, uh, she wants to smash. That is not what I was talking about. But I do love. When Oscar we were talking Isaac. about Dune, that's what you're talking about. Nope. Oh, I was, ta- I was talking about the bagpipes. The bagpipe. Oh, <laughs> the bagpipe thing. Love it. I do love Oscar Isaac though. That man is pretty. And I'm actually going to talk about something that involves Oscar Isaac. Oh, that's exciting. It's X Men Apocalypse, the worst one. No. Um, <laughs> but Dune. So I watched it, and it, it's gorgeous beautiful um i watched it with subtitles which is good because they use a bunch of funky words I did like shy halud and yeah. something i'll die the bene Gesserit. i would bene not Gesserit, yeah. would not know how to, oh and in Chris, the old movies they say they say harkonnen yeah it's we not, talked about that oh we did last week oh, okay they say two weeks ago they say it's supposed to be pronounced harkonnen and that's yeah. how they pronounce it 
in this movie. Because I looked it up, and I was like, I thought it was pronounced Harkonnen. I think it would be better if it were Harkonnen. That it, sounds like a cooler name. It makes more phonetical sense if you look at the word. The Kwisatz Haderach. Is that the little the little box? No, that's the I don't remember test. what that's called. It's a little uh, test. I think the Kwisatz Haderach was like. Oh, I don't know. I think that's the thing where he he's the chosen one or something. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's and Gom Jabbar is the thing she's holding guy's neck during the the, the gom, box test. The Gom Jabber. Gom Jabber. <laughs> it looks like Gom Jabber when you look at it. Uh, yeah, it makes me want to kind of want want to read those books because i want to know more Mm -hmm. because it seems real like a really interesting world and again it seems like a world you dig that's for sure yeah it's very interesting and there's uh again it's a very good looking movie Mm -hmm. Uh, i don't know if you knew that i knew this going in that it uh doesn't even cover the entirety of the first book oh it doesn't it does not oh boy so i knew that going in so i knew to expect like the ending would be kind of weird well the 84 series, does that cover all three books? What, the movie? Yeah. They only did the one movie, so definitely not. Just the first just the first book then? Yes. Okay. And then yes, I do recall. I was like, there's some things missing from this movie. Well, and weren't. who knows like what they added. Um, like Baron Harkonnen, as I understand it, does not fly in the books. He has, he has things that hold him up, though. Some, yeah. That was really cool when he first like... Ascended. Levitated. Yes, because it was it was such a haunting shot. It really was. I was like, oh, and uh, Skarsgård does a great yeah. job. I can't. Remember. It's the dad, Skarsgård. Bill? No. Scar's dad. Scar's dad. Yeah. Skarsgård. Scar's dad. We. There's also the. Um, I love that they have to fight hand to hand because they have their little force fields. Yeah. And fast things can't get through them, so you can't shoot a bullet. You have to go up there with a knife and just start stabbing at each other. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fun. Yeah. And Jason Momoa at one point no longer has a beard, and he looks weird to me. Yes, it did look strange. Um. So yeah, I, I really want to. I I'm tempted to read those books. There's was it, a. Was it you? We were talking about the name Duncan Idaho. Yes. What? I don't know. Just that it's a funny. I name. think it was a TikTok that I saw, and it was like. Everybody is like, oh, there's a dude named Duncan Idaho. What a stupid name, blah, blah, blah. It's like, but think about this. That story takes place three, four thousand years in the Eight. future. Well, okay. Thousand. Well, the the farthest back, he was talking about the farthest back name that we know or something. It's 5,000 years ago. It's something very, um, it's fr- it originates somewhere from the, the Middle East or India or something like that. And it sounds very foreign to our ears. It's a name that sounds very foreign to our ears. And so it's something, but it was like the most popular name back then. So it's like, it was like Tom to them. It was something that sounds very foreign to us now. And it's like, so think about that. That that guy, Duncan Idaho, he's named after a name five, six, th- whatever, how many thousand years ago. So it's a very exotic name to them. And it's like, I wouldn't say maybe, but you also have Paul out there. That's true. So I'm not convinced that it's that exotic. That might be a family name, though. That might have been passed down. Paul. There's also a part where uh, one of the, the... And Lady Jessica. I guess. Lady Jessica, yeah. Again, these might be exotic names that maybe the royalty have very exotic names and that's exotic to them. Maybe we uh, we haven't read the books. We don't know. I don't we know. haven't even watched the miniseries that was on sci-fi. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if it's good or not. Probably, Probably not. not. Probably not. But there's um, the the Emperor's Truthsayer or whatever her name is. The one who gives the test with the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has a part where she's like, we told you to have a girl. They, they can... It's like, what? <laughs> they can control... The Bene Gesserit can control what gender... Uh, what sex infant they have that's pretty wild like just with their mind or whatever yeah, or with, with the, science with the control of their bodies that's, that's how that's, that's how they fun. use the voice and everything yeah the voice thing is pretty cool too yeah it is she's like do this <laughs> and they're like okay <laughs> and they're like that one guy's deaf don't even don't even bother with that yeah that it seems like a really cool world and again it it also just it looks really good it was a very pretty it, movie and it's not just the like acting also very good it's not like uh yeah like that part where timothy chalamet has to act like he's being hurt by nothing or whatever when he has his hand in the box boy his face got red and he got sweaty you're having to like and he looked like he was really straining to poop yeah he's like having to convey the feeling of like horrible horrible pain while also just sitting there with his hand in a box and then and then when he overcomes it he just goes pan deadpan yeah it's pretty cool um cool 
and it inspired me to finally watch Blade Runner 2049 because it is Did directed. Did just come out? Came out a few years ago. Is that the one with Ryan Gosling? It is. Okay, I've watched part of it. Um, it is really good, but I was inspired to watch it because it's directed by the same person. Oh, who is it? Denis Villeneuve. Hmm. It's a Frenchy looking name. Oh, okay. He's from Canada. I don't know if it... He's, I'm sure it is Frenchy. Yeah. Um, oh, Dune is also very long. Two and a half hours. Blade oh, Runner yes. is two hours and 45 minutes. So Ooh, it's even longer. Longer. Um, I watched both those movies the same day. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's an all day affair. Yeah. So I was like, I'm movied out. I'm good. Yeah. I'm not watching Shang-Chi actually. Oh. I'm going to skip out on that for the moment because I have watched too much movie. Uh, Blade Runner is quite good. I liked it a lot. It's uh, very slow. Mm-hmm, Again, mm-hmm. kind of similar to the original Blade Runner, actually, mm-hmm. and Dune. There's kind of a lot of like just build up backstory. Just, and there's a lot of like just look at look at how nice this movie looks, which is why I was like, I'm fine with this. Mm-hmm. It's like Blade Runner, especially, is really good looking. It's like, man, that's pretty. It's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of action in it, but what is there is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Check that out. They're both on HBO Max for now. Dune's leaving like the 20 something gift, I think. Soon, yeah. So watch it soon. Um, yeah, that's. I think that's about all I've got to, to yak about. So I don't know. Um, unlike you, I did watch Shang-Chi. Yeah. Uh, that's how you pronounce it, at least I, according to that. And according to like every commercial. And oh, okay. Oh, I haven't watched this current. Anyway, very good. I thought it was really great. I thought it was really cool. Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. You know who I don't like? Um, Jared Leto. Don't like him. But he's in Blade Runner. I forgot to mention. I I kept saying is? this to my myself. Yes, he plays a rich jerk named uh, Niander Wallace, and it's the role of a lifetime because he's a weird creep. And it's like Jared Leto, you were born for that, baby. This is, this is you. That's you it was all day. You. Yep. Um, no, who I don't like is Aquafina. Not a fan of Aquafina. That may be controversial, but I just don't like Aquafina that much. What does she do? She is a comedian. Um, she became popular. She had a viral song that she made, a funny song about her vagine. And, uh, viral and vagine is not a good combination, I think. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I just don't find her funny. I just. I don't, I don't find her funny, uh, but that's okay. I don't have to. Um, uh, but sh- I thought it, she was okay in the Strong chi movie. Uh, but anyway, uh, I thought it was a great movie. It wasn't lessened by her, that's for sure. Um, that's all you can ask for. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Jared Leto did not lessen Blade Runner either because he did his job right by being a weird creep. By being a weird creep. I forget that he's also in American Psycho, which is crazy because that's an old movie. That's like early 90s. He's like older than you think. Yes, yes, he is. A like, lot of actors are actually. But he's way older than I thought he was. Like when he was in 30 Seconds to Mars or whatever that band was that he fronted or whatever. He's like, that like that his, is the band, yes. He's like in his... 30s or 40s he's 49 right now so he's in his 30s which isn't that old because i'm in my 30s i mean if you're in your 30s you're basically dead but if you're in a rock you know emo band like that you should be in your 20s you would think so whatever he did good he made cool songs but uh what else did i watch andrew i'll tell you what i watched i watched all three extended release editions of lord of the rings and let me tell you i loved it Okay. Uh, it's about 12-ish hours of And you your watched life. it all at the same time. Uh, no, we definitely broke it up in a few days. But um, it was really good. It added so much. Ooh, I forgot to tell you. We were talking about this before we started recording. Um, Mary and Pippin, a lot more of them, which I love. A lot more backstory with uh, Boromir and Faramir, uh, which I really appreciated, especially more like with their like their dad uh the steward of gondor whatever his name is i can't remember um boy he is even kookier than in the movie dude has just some marbles that are rolling around up there um yeah it was really good sauron what the heck happened to that guy saruman i'm sorry saruman and yes i don't like that their names are so similar either i don't like it Saruman and Grima Wormtongue. We get to see what happened to those dudes. 
Um, and the tower, you know, the, the, the tower that they took over, kind of get to Isengard, get to kind of see what happens there. And anyway, it's, uh, it, yeah, it's, it was so good. A lot of, uh, yeah, it was good. I've still never seen the extended versions. I don't know the last time I saw those movies at all, actually. The extended versions are on HBO. Oh, are they? Yep, those are on HBO. That's probably why I never saw them. I got the regular version DVDs eons ago, and I was like, it's the extended, and they're more expensive. It's like, why don't you have these other ones? Better not. So, Well, you should watch it on... Uh, HBO Max. Yeah, HBO Max. Oh, Shang-Chi, obviously, on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. I want to see The Eternals. Wait, yeah. I'm ready to see that. I thought it looked really cool. I'm reading a... Well, listening to a book right now. I'm almost done with it. It's called... Um, Hold on, I'll tell you. It's about Achilles. I think it may be called Achilles. Achilles. <laughs> it's called. The- oh, it's called the Song of Achilles. Okay, there you. Oh, is this the one where um, gay stuff? Yes. Yeah, because Achilles was probably a homosexual. Yes. He um, in the video game Hades, you reunite him with his his man lover Pericles. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful. It's really well written and. I cleaned the house for like six hours the other day. That seems like a lot of hours. It to be was cleaning. a lot. It was just, yes, it was a lot of cleaning. But I listened to it the whole time, and it was still great the whole time, and I didn't get tired of it. I kind of got a little the Shades of Magic trilogy that I started. Oh yeah, I'm still on book one. It's kind of oh. just not. I don't know. That seems like a bad sign. Yeah, kind of. It's still got an hour and a half left, and I'm like, really. So it's not a good sign when you say that about a book. Um, I still think we should do a, a book club and both read Dune <laughs> and see what's up. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's And you should do this too. And everybody should do this. Alyssa, my, my best friend Alyssa, yeah. she told me about this, uh, this subscription service, which you might have heard of. Called The Library? Well, no. It's called Scri- Scribd or Scribed. I think it's Scribed. Oh. Listen. Is it, it better than Audible or yes, something? Yes. $10 a month just as an expansive library as audible and and also has like sheet music if you're into that it has i am not it has other things like i, I don't know she was telling me uh, other things that audible doesn't have now i don't know if you get like some of like the free books that audible has but i, I think it might be unlimited downloads on scribe so it's like why the heck would i not because audible is like 30 bucks a month if you get enough credits well, uh, just real quick, we are not sponsored by whoever these people are. No, we are not. Uh, Caitlin is just just uh, bragging about a service she doesn't use, apparently. But I I need to I need to yeah I need to check it out, and I think they have a th- a month free subscription to That's trial good. it, so you can see if you like it. I actually have, so I don't need this for doing my my Dune reading because one, I'll probably just go to the library. Yeah, um, I but also have- secondly. I literally have a copy of Dune in my house, so I can just grab that. But I like audiobooks, so well, I feel you know like me. I go on the I'm on the run, moving around, doing stuff, so I, I like having a audiobook. I it depends. But I feel like something like Dune, where they're gonna say weird words I don't understand, I need to see what those <laughs> words are. You said what was that word you the just said? Shy Hulud. What even is that? Oh, it's the worm. Cool. Oh. Got it. <laughs> It's I had Googled that after the, because there's yes. a part where somebody's like, I only serve the Shai Hulud. And I was like, so what is that? Yeah. And then his name is something similar. And I was like, wait, what, what I thought they just, were they, what? It's very confusing. Yeah. Quisets Haderach. Bene Gesserit. Something Al Daib. Yeah. I don't remember. That, yep. that was like, they're like, he's the Messiah or something. Paul, Paul Atreides' and dad is named Leto. Yeah. Looks like Leto. I think Jared they say it. Leto. I think they said it more like Leto or Leto or something. Probably doesn't matter. Speaking of Oscar Isaac, he was in X Men Apocalypse. Well, yeah, we already saw that. He was in those Star Wars movies. Yes, he was Poe Dameron. Yeah, that's right. Um, I started watching on HBO. Um, this was a bad idea. A show called Scenes from a Marriage because I heard it was amazing. It sounds like it's going to be a nightmare. Where is it going to be? Where like lots of arguing and stuff. Well, and like, oh, we're struggling in our relationship and it's a real nightmare. It's way too real. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, it, it really hit close to home because um, I, 
I'm just going to spoiler alert here. Just going to spoiler alert. Okay. I'm Go in, for it. I'm only in like, they're like really long episodes or like an hour a piece. Uh, so Oscar Isaac is the husband and Jessica Chastain, who I love both of those actors. Uh, Jessica Chastain is the wife. Um, she walks in one night out of the blue after she has an abortion, um, which was very triggering. Not that I've had an abortion, uh, but it was just very emotional. Did he know that was happening? Yes. Okay. And they were I, know, I was wondering if that was like a no. surprise. They no had, more baby. They had a kid already and then they decided. Oh, that's too many as it is. Yeah. Well, she, I get it. Well, Jessica just saying she was like, it was so much for me. I, I can't handle this kid. But then they had kind of decided like. In one scene, they're like getting excited, like I think we're gonna do this. I think we're gonna do this. And the next scene, just cuts to she's at the OBGYN's office, and they're like, "So you take this pill, and then it will start. You'll start noticing some cramping, and then you'll notice some bleeding, and it's not gonna. It's gonna be uncomfortable." And I was like, "Oh!" And it, and then Oscar Isaac is just sitting there, and like he supports his wife, but you can you can see the sadness in his eyes that he wanted it, and it was so heartbreaking. And I was crying and I was like, I look like a fool. I'm watching this on my phone and I'm crying. And then she comes in a few months later, nine months later, she works. She's some VP of a big company, comes home from a business trip. He's kind of like a stay at home dad. So, but, and she comes home from a big business trip and walks in and is like, I'm leaving. I found somebody else. I'm in love with somebody else. And I was like, and I'm going to turn this off now because I started crying like a lunatic. So I was like, um, I'm not in the right mindset for this right. <laughs> After that abortion um, episode, I think I need a break. Just, uh, just layers upon layers of just like the most horrible stuff yeah, constantly. It was it was very taxing emotionally. But those both of them are such great actors and they're both so beautiful. And I, I love them both together. And I think it will turn around because all the posters are beautiful for it. And I think they come out of it, which is going to be even harder because obviously my, my last marriage did not end that way. And in case in, it's very triggering because in my last marriage, my ex-husband came in and he never told me, he never admitted. I fi- I found out by myself that he was having an affair with his coworker. So that was why it was very triggering. Um, so, uh, anyways, that, that I was like, I need a break from that. I'm in a great place now and I love John very much and I'm very grateful for him, but yeah, I was like, I'm going to need a break from this show. <laughs> Just let me come back to you in a little bit. <laughs> we'll come back later. Yeah, we're going to revisit you later. We, we need some distance here. Yes. Apparently, it was a show like in the 70s or 80s or something um, or movie or something. I don't know. I know there's that one I think it's called Marriage Story. Which sounds no. also a lot like yeah. something where you do not want to watch it. If what, what, who was in that? Um, Kylo Ren yes. and uh, yes. Black Widow. Yes. I literally, Scarlett Johansson and What's-His-Face. I started crying at the commercial. I watched it a couple times because there's this beautiful song that they play in it. And it's like, I've been loving you. And it's like beautiful, soulful song. And then cuts to the next scene. They're in court talking about custody. And it's like, and like they're both like in that song. There's two different cuts of that of that trailer. One is from her talking how much she loves Adam Driver. He's a great dad, blah, blah, blah. And then the other um, trailer is his him saying that kind of stuff. And then each of them cut scene in the trailer. And they're both in court talking about divorce. And I was like, uh, no, 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 no. It just seems like a harrowing movie. Especially because <sighs> I've seen like one scene where he's just like, Every day I wake up, I wish you were dead or yes. something. And well, then I saw intense. I saw a cut of that where they replaced Adam Driver with a Muppet. And it, <laughs> I don't I don't know why they did that, but it's funny to me. <laughs> oh, it probably helps helps break that <laughs> helps break that up a little. Yeah, that one would be a very taxing show too. I think it sounds like you need to watch like something fun. Yeah, um, The Office always watch Wellington Paranormal. Oh, I you do would love need that. To wa- I do need it's to on watch the HBO. That. I do need to watch it. You would love it. I do need to watch that. Um. Yeah, Scenes from a Marriage was a a show or something in 1974. I just saw it. Let's all recommend things for Caitlin to watch. Uh, Wellington Paranormal. Um, I think you should leave. Um, Auntie Donna's Big Old House of Fun. No. Yes, you love it. No. You've loved everything I've shown you from it. Mm, no. Like, everything's a drum. 
don't like it. You love everything's a drum. I'll I'll trust your Wellington paranormal because I do love the New Zealand stuff. You know that. You like Morning Brown. No, I don't. <laughs> Morning Brown's a very good song. No, look I it up. Don't. Auntie Donna, Morning Brown. I know. Brown. I know. <laughs> it's, I'm telling the people at home. They <laughs> oh, need to look it up. Oh, please don't. Um, I don't know. I was listening to the Pop Star soundtrack the other day. That movie's pretty good. Pop Star? It stars Andy Samberg, and he's a pop star. Oh, yeah. You told me about pop that. Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping. Um, I th- thought- that's the one that has the very funny song, um, the Bin Laden song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's where that comes from oh, that song it's so funny and so i'm guessing lonely island makes an appearance yeah they're all in it yeah okay love that love them um to make you feel old 15 years ago it's the anniversary of the tenacious d soundtrack when they did tribute and effortgently are you talking about the the album or the movie because mm-hmm. they did a movie the one where the co- I guess it's an album. I'm if, it, sh- if it has tribute on it, then it's the album, yeah, the original album. Yeah. Uh, did you? They had a TV show. No, I didn't know that. I haven't watched it in a long time. It it might be on HBO Max because it was an HBO show. I think. Um, Andrew, how old were you fifteen years ago? Um, you asked me to do an amount of math. Uh, I would have been seventeen, I think. Yeah, I was sixteen. Yeah, that's um, that was a decade and a half ago. Yeah, we're dying. Yeah, I made reference to 2004 today. I was doing some mundane work at work, and a pamphlet I came across that I was cleaning out um, from this stuff. It was from 2004, and I was like, that was almost 20 years ago. I was like, ugh, <laughs> I feel sick. So I... I think uh, 15 years ago for Tenacious D, that can't be right because I'm, oh. or I don't think it would be right. It says the TV show came out in 97 and Tribute is in that TV show. Huh. So I don't, maybe when the album came out later or something, but that would be weird because well, it's a, it's like a musical show. Also, it looks like it's on HBO Max. So Maybe it's a Pick of Destiny or something. Uh, That actually might be right because I think that's when, I think I would have been about 17 or 18 when that movie came out. Um, I just saw Jack Black post something about it today and I was like, I'm so old. The movie's not very good. Well, neither are you. I mean, again, that's how I would know and all that. Takes one to know one. <laughs> 92% of viewers liked the movie. I thought it was like, meh. I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see what year it came out. 2006. Okay. So that's about right, right? Pretty close. Yep. Yeah. Like, yep. Yep. Um, yeah. And I would have been 17 in 2006 we did it so all checks out we did it that's how i was able to go to the movie because <laughs> it was r-rated and you're almost this, an adult uh technically, only technically technically <laughs> technically only is fly the concords on hbo max did we figure out that it wasn't or something i think it is not if you can believe that i'm gonna check that 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 sounds like madness yeah i think but boy this uh Justwatch.com says it's on HBO Max, so oh, okay. maybe it is now. M- maybe, yeah. But, to, I mean, Fly of the Concords almost feels like a better <gasps> Tenacious D in some ways, I as far it. as, like, the show, because it's a, it's a duo. Listen. And, yeah. Uh, That was the introduction to New Zealand humor right there, was Fly of the Concords, genuinely. Um, And what a great introduction it was, because it taught me what and, a New Zealand accent is like. And who introduced you? That was Andrew it was Ferguson. Me. It was this guy. I'm on the cutting edge. You you were then. But Still am, whenever, baby. Then like whenever it's, if I do a New Zealand accent, it's always from you beard is good. And it's like. Thank you. Also. <laughs> yeah. What? Say my beard is good. Your beard is good. You're good about finding shortcuts around this part of town. It's like a flat, a flat. And that's a very good song that follows. Yeah. You don't know it. <laughs> but you got it going Go. on. Got it going on. Not in a gay way, just, just in a hey man. I wanted to say you're good. looking okay. Why can't okay. a heterosexual guy, guy tell a heterosexual guy, guy that he thinks his boot is fine? fine. Not yeah, all the time, obviously. Anyway. Yeah, that's a good one. And at the end, he's like, can I please have a look at the lyrics? <laughs> that's that's a, another one of your weird songs. It's just man. another one of your weird songs, man. <laughs> So says re- you put, he says you put a wig on me and spoon me when we're when no, I'm asleep. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think that so. was in there. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah. So whenever I do New Zealand, I always go, your beard is good. 
Because that's like the most New Zealand sounding sentence I can say. Your beard is good. I mean, the most important thing is you've got options Mm -hmm. for things that you have either never seen or haven't seen in a A long long time. time. Fly of the Concords, Tenacious D, both on HBO Max. Wellington Paranormal, Mm -hmm. which I really think you would 100% like. Yes, I know I would. That's on there. So you you have options. Amazon Prime has uh, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place still. Mm. (laughs) I know. You're not going to watch that. I love it, though. It's Mm -hmm. so funny. You haven't even watched it. I don't want to hear that kind of reaction when it's something you've never even watched mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. that's that's uh mm-hmm. unacceptable <laughs> yeah so we're just yeah some happy recommendations after watching scenes for my marriage Whew. psych well, that's a good show that's on prime it's a good show community also on prime or just rewatch the office for the thousandth time in a row do you have peacock no okay well it sounds like you can't watch the office then yes i can it's on comedy central oh is it yeah all, like all day, every day. Oh, I'm not going to watch television. You're going to watch television with commercials? I have it all recorded and I fast forward the commercials. Ridiculous. Just watch Community, that show you've never watched. I think you need to watch the entirety of that. Um, so there was a two hour block for a long time where NBC had The Office, Parks and Rec, mm. Community, and 30 Rock all on the same night. That was prime time. That's wild because those are all great shows. Yes. So you should watch Community. Okay. Uh, it's on Prime. Watch it on Prime because they have an episode that Netflix doesn't. Netflix took it off. They also have the longer version of the pilot, and it's weird to me when I watch it and it's not the right one. Because mm. there's like jokes that go on a little longer in the original version, mm-hmm. or scenes that go a little longer, and that's what I'm used to seeing. Mm-hmm. So then you watch it on Netflix and it's like, oh, they're like, there's like a bunch of stuff that's cut out. This is really bothering me. It's messing with the flow of this episode I've seen like a thousand times. Like, I don't understand it. It's like the opposite of those super fan episodes on uh, The Office where they added back stuff. Oh, yeah. And like really, th- I'm like, this was not there. <laughs> this is this is throwing me off in a different way. Don't remember this. But I don't know. Wellington okay. Paranormal. I'm just going to text you that every day until okay. you watch it. How about yeah. that? Well, give me a little. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. going to text it when I go home. Oh, already? Okay. Wow. I'm just going to put it in your brain every day. Well, okay. Uh, last week was Radiologic Technologist Week, so thank you, sure. Rad Techs. I work with Rad Techs every day, so. How rad are they? They're literally the party we had two years ago. It was an 80s party that I threw, and it was our rad techs are totally rad. And everybody got fired. It was too much stuff <laughs> happening. <laughs> no. It was really good. It, it was, was great. It was too wild, too rad. And this year, I did. I got every... Well, my, my coworker and I who planned it, we got all of our rad techs personalized, a deck of playing cards, and they... And our theme was... I got a cake sit, and I got, we got them scratch-offs. And a bunch of candy and food and stuff. And it was our, uh, we hit the jackpot with our with our rad techs. That's fun. Yeah. So are they real uh, lottery things that they could possibly win? Yeah, scratch they were offs? scratch offs. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. I, I, I had extra and I, I got one. You see it there. I do. What did you win? Anything? A dollar. A dollar? I feel really bad because... There are nine rad techs, and I gave them each two scratch offs. So I got twenty dollars worth of one dollar scratch offs. So it was two extra, and so I I did one, and then my coworker that helped me plan it. I was like, let's let's scratch one. So we scratched it. I, I'm I'm the only one who won something. <laughs> A whole dollar. A dollar. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, that if you scratch off enough, eventually you'll make your money back. Yeah, I'm just going to use that. Not. I'm going to use that to go get another one. Because why not? It's only a dollar. <laughs> there you go. Just the con- can you just That's how they do it. Can you just exchange this? And be like, one dollar, please. Kind of. <laughs> Instead I mean, of taking a real dollar. That would be fun if you could do that. I don't know. Just like, just, just take it out of this. It's no, like a gift card. I don't know if it works like that. <laughs> Probably not. But yay, I got a dollar. I've never bought lottery stuff. I was very confused. I'm scared of gambling. Yeah, I was. I'm scared of yeah, like you stay going away. down. You stay away. Uh, so I didn't talk about this, but there's a game called Destiny 2. Yeah. Uh, you knew I'd been playing it. I never mentioned it on the show. Uh, I deleted it because I spend way too much time on it. Mm-hmm. It is. Because like, I'll be like, oh, got to do my daily 
bounties today. So How I get on there you? every single and it just like it sucks all the oxygen out of the room of like anything else. Like I'm not gonna watch anything else. I'm not gonna play yeah. anything else. I'm not gonna read anything. So I was just like I gotta get rid of this. Yeah. It's gotta go. Plus I did everything in the season they were doing, so I was like, I I just it's it's time for this. Delete it. Let's yeah. go. Move move on to something else. That's probably a good idea. Yeah, there's I've never played anything else that does that to me, so that ex- yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. I'll just wait until February when the expansion comes out and I'll be back on it. Or not. For we'll a little see. while, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Um we went to Petite and Keat this weekend, by the way. Great oh, restaurant oh, in Little Rock. Okay, I was like, what? <laughs> Petite and Keat. Petite and Keat. Great restaurant in Little Rock. John's birthday's coming up, so we met a bunch of us surprised him and met a bunch of his friends and had the most delicious steak I've had maybe in my life. If if not my life in a very, very long time. It was incredible. I literally barely used my knife to cut it. That's exciting. It was so good. It was perfectly cooked. The flavor was amazing. What kind did you get? Filet? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. 100% yes. I usually would, if I'm at like a regular place and not a fancy place, Mm -hmm. I'll get like the ribeye because it's like, it's quality enough, but it's not super expensive. Mm -mm. Uh, One time I went to, uh, what's it called? Golden Corral. (laughs) Yeah. I went to Golden Corral. Uh, What was (laughs) It's the place in North Little Rock, something state. I don't remember what it's called. Mm-hmm. It's, it's there with the Benihana as well in that hotel. I have no idea. I can't think of what that place is called now. Anyway, went there Benihana's one time. Benihana's still there? Probably. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe it shut down because it's a pandemic. Mm-hmm. That would that'd be a bad place to go during mm-hmm. the pandemic because mm-hmm. you're I'll, crowded I'll, yeah, there. Yep. Um, anyway, that's like, I, I was like, I'm getting a filet and it was fantastic. So good. Riverfront Steakhouse. That's oh, what it's called. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thought of it. There yeah. we go. Uh, Arthur's though, uh, Arthur's. I mean, that was pretty flipping amazing steak too. It's a really nice restaurant in Little Rock. Yeah, I would have steak more often if I were more confident in cooking it myself. I'm I'm terrible at it. Cannot perfect it. I've. It's like a fifty fifty shot for me, if that even. Yeah. Where I'm just like, well, I made it. Uh, well done. This may as well have come from a freaking Waffle House. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, yeah. What is this? And then or, sometimes it's like, or you'll take it off too early and it's bloody and you're like, Oh no. And then you're not supposed to put it back on. You're like, great. It's ruined now. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. I think I'm going to try next time I do steak. I'm going to try doing the sous vide. I've heard that's pretty good. It cooks yeah. it very evenly. Exactly. Also, you should try it in the air fryer. Steak in the air fryer. I know it sounds weird. It does sound weird. It, it adds like a nice char, a little, well, not char, but a nice, almost crispy. That's what I want. A nice texture to the outside of it okay um the, the, the s- salmon that i make yeah i do, I do that and it's perfect perfect in the air fryer literally perfect i know the thing with the sous vide is like you cook it in the in the thing and then you pull it out and sear it on oh okay okay because <laughs> otherwise it'll be kind of it'll it'll technically be fine yeah but of, it won't look good and it probably won't w- taste that good without the sear the sear is important kind of wet <laughs> yeah i just want my wet meat <laughs> <laughs> gross Okay, I think that means we need to go. I think you're right. Let's wrap this up. Guys, thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate it. This has been Paint the Town Dead. Uh, you can catch us on Facebook at Paint the Town Dead. Instagram, Paint the Town Dead, all one word. You can email us at pttdpod at gmail.com. And then um, also Twitter. We have Twitter. It's pttdpod as well. We have a TikTok. We have not posted anything. I think it's Paint the Town Dead. We really need to get on that. I don't know what we'll post. We're so awkward. We'll I don't post uh, hula hoop dances. No. In, don't uh, promise things in you underwear. can't. In underwear. Nope. Nope. That is that is a no. Caitlin said she's going to do it. She promised. It's true. That's not. Anyway, nobody wants to see that. We um, TikTok seems like a bad place. <laughs> it's not. It is what you make it. It is what you make it, Andrew. If you see if you see boobs on there, it's because you're looking at boobs on there. Hell yeah, I am. No, stop. I don't use TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, we, we don't forget everything that just was said. Um, you can we, we do episodes every other Tuesday now. Um, so uh, mostly every other Tuesday, so you can catch us then. Um, so thank you guys again for listening. Be sure to rate five stars anywhere you can, like anywhere you can, share anything you can. All that jazz. We really appreciate it. I think that's it. Guys, have a wonderful next couple of weeks. Stay safe. Is is the Thanksgiving holiday going to come up during that time? I think so. 
think, think that seems about right. I think we're about going to hit that. So uh, we might need to work on uh, recording schedule changes or something then. I don't know how how the calendar lays out here. Yeah, we'll f- maybe we'll have to rush you to record early so it releases on time. Yeah, or well, something. We'll I don't know. It. We'll figure it out. Anyway, we'll, we'll get there. But hey, we'll yeah. see you in a couple weeks, guys. Have a safe holiday. Eat lots of food. And Christopher Columbus was a jerk. Uh, so yeah, uh, have a great couple weeks. We'll see you later. Keep that meat wet. <laughs>